سمش شیرین ترین آواز چیست چشم غمگینش به روی و خیر ما گفتمش ترین آواز چیست در چشم غمگیش برو یا خیر ما قطر قطر شش از مجان چکی لز افتادش بگی سوی بلند Good evening, everybody. There we go. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to have to apologize for one thing today as um, unfortunately I am missing one page and my printer is without ink. So one of the pages I'm going to have to read off my computer this evening. But to start with, oh, look, there's me unprepared again. That's what live cinema does for us. But to start off the evening, I am going to read some beautiful poetry by Rumi. So enjoy. Thank you very much for joining me. And for those who watch this later, I really hope you enjoy it. Please do feel free to share it with your friends, family, even your enemies. And um, if you want to give us a donation, you can donate to, there's my little, my little Aladdin's lamp. If you want to give us a dona donation, because we do all of this for free, please feel free to give a donation to paypal.me slash Vienna Theatre Project. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy this evening's reading. So first of all, I'm going to just go read just two poems by Rumi from The Book of Love, and it's his poetry translated by Coleman Barks. Love comes sailing through, and I scream. Love sits beside me like a private supply of itself. Love puts away the instruments and takes off the silk robes. Our nakedness, together, changes me completely. I have one more. Where was it? Here. Mm. If you love, love for yourself. What I say makes me drunk. Nightingale, iris, parrot, jasmine. I speak those languages along with the idiom of my longing for Shamsi, Tabriz. So a few little comments from Rumi. And as I always like to say, Without further ado, I hope I can read this now. I'm going to start reading to you from 1001 Nights. Let me just double check. Yes. Now, so I hope you're all sitting comfortably. Hi, Papillon. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Dot Is whose name I can't otherwise see. Um, now, when it was the 524th night, she pursued 
it has reached me, O auspicious king, that Shimaka said to Shan Shah, I must needs send thee to the monk, Yagmus, on the back of a big bird with four wings, each measuring thirty hashimi cubits in length, and it hath feet like those of an elephant, but it flieth only twice a year. And there was with King Shimaka an officer by name Tim Shun, who used every day to carry off to Bactrian camels from the land of Iraq and cut them up for the bird that it might eat them. So King Shimaka bade the fowl take up Jan Shah and bear him to the cell of the hermit Yagmus. And it rose into the air and flew on, days and nights, till it came to the mountain of the citadels and the hermitage of diamonds, where Jan Shah alighted, and going up to the hermitage, found Yagmus the monk at his devotions. So he entered the chapel, and kissing the ground, stood respectfully before the hermit. When Yahmus saw him, he said, Welcome, O my son. O parted from thy home, and guard for forth to Rome. Show me the cause of thy coming thither. And so Jan Shah wept, and acquainted him with all that had befallen him from the beginning to end, and that he was in a quest of the castle of jewels. The monk marvelled greatly at his story and said, By Allah, O oh my son, never in my life heard I of this castle, nor ever saw I one who had heard of it or had seen it. For all I was alive in the days of Noah and Allah's prophets on whom be peace. And I have ruled the birds and beasts and jinn ever since his time. Nor do I believe that Solomon David's son himself knew of it. But wait till the birds and the beasts and the chiefs of the Jan come to do their homage to me, and I will question them of it. Peradventure, some one of them may be able to give us news of it, and Allah Almighty shall make all things easy to thee. So, Jan Shah homed with the hermit until the day of the assembly, when all the birds and beasts and Jan came to swear fealty, and Yahmus and his guest questioned them anent Takni, the castle of jewels. But they all replied, We never saw or heard of such a place. At this, Jan Shah fell a weeping and lamenting, and humbled himself before the Most High. But as he was thus engaged, Behold, there flew down from the heights of air another bird, big of bulk and black of blee, which had tarried behind the rest and kissed the hermit's hands. Yachmus asked it to attack me that castle of jewels, and it answered, saying, O oh monk, when I and my brothers were small chicks, we abode behind the mountain of Kaf on a hill of crystal in the midst of a great desert. And our father and mother used to set out for it every morning and in the evening come back with our food. They went out early one day and were absent from us a senate and hunger was sore upon us. But on the eighth day they returned both weeping and we asked them the reason for their absence. Quoth they, a married swooped down on us and carried us off in his claws to the Tachni, the castle of jewels and brought us before King Shalan, who would have slain us, but we told them that we had left behind us a brooding of fledglings, so he spared our lives and let us go. And were my parents yet in the bonds of life, they would give thee news of the castle. When Jan Shah heard this, he wept bitter tears and said to the hermit, Prithee, Bid the bird carry me to his father and mother's nest on, and here we go, Crystal Hill.
behind the mountain calf. So the hermit said, O bird, I desire thee to obey this youth in whatsoever he may command thee. I hear, and I obey thy bidding, replied the fowl, and, taking Janshah on its back, flew with him days and nights, without ceasing till it set him down on the hill of crystal, and there alighted. And having delayed there a resting while, it again set him on its back, and flew off, and ceased not flying two whole days, till it reached the spot where the nest was. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day, and ceased, saying, her permitted, say. Now, when it was the five hundred and twenty-fifth night, she said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the fowl ceased not flying with Jan Shah two full days, till it reached the spot where the nest was, and set him down there and said, O oh, Jan Shah, this is where our nest was. He wept sore and replied, I pray thee, bear me farther on to where thy parents used to forage for food. The bird consented. So it took him up again and flew on with seven nights and eight days till it set him down on the top of a high hill, Kamus height, and left him there saying, I know of no land behind this hill. Then it flew away and Jan Shah sat down on the hilltop and fell asleep. When he awoke, he saw something gleaming far off, as it were lighting and filling the firmament with its flashings. And he wondered with this sheen could he wondered what this sheen could be, without wotting that it was the castle he sought. So he descended the mountain and made towards the light which came from Tacni, the castle of jewels, distant two months' journey from Camus, the hill whereon he had lit, and its foundation were fashioned of red rubies, and its buildings of yellow gold. Moreover, it had a thousand turrets builded of precious metals, and stones of price studded, and set in the mineral, minerals brought from the main of the Mercs. And on this account, it was named the Castle of Jewels, Techni. It was a vast, great castle, and the name of its king was King Shalan, the father of the Lady Shamsa and her sisters. Such was the case with Jan Shah, but as regards Princess Shamsa, when she fled from Jan Shah, she made straight for the castle of jewels and told her father and mother all that had passed between the prince and herself how he had wandered the world and had seen its marvels and wonders and how fondly he loved her and how dearly she loved him. Quoth they, Thou hast not dealt righteous, righteously with him as Allah would have thee deal. Moreover, King Shalan repeated the story to his guards and offered the officers of the Marids of the Jinn and bade them bring him every mortal they should see. For the Lady Shamsa had said to her parents, Jan Shah loveth me with passionate love, and for sure he will follow me. For when flying from his father's roof, I cried to him, And thou love me, seek me, attack me, the castle of jewels. Now, when Jan Shah beheld that sheen and shine, he made straight for it, wishing to find what it might be. And as chance would have it, Shamsa had that very day dispatched a Marid on an occasion in the direction of the hill Kamus, and on his way thither, he caught sight of a man, a mortal. So he hastened up to him and saluted him. Jan Shah was terrified at his sight, but returned his salam, and the Marid asked, what is thy name? And he answered, My name is Jan Shah, 
and I have fallen madly in love with Virginia, known as Princess Shamsa, who captivated me by her beauty and loveliness. But despite my dear love, she fled from the perilous wherein I placed her, and behold, I am here in quest of her. Herewith, he whipped, bitter weeping. The Marid looked at him, and his heart burned with pity on hearing the sad tale, and he said, Weep not, for surely thou art come to thy desire. Know that she loveth thee fondly, and hath told her parents of thy love for thee, and all in yonder castle love thee for her sake. So, be of good cheer, and keep thine eyes cool of tear. Then he took him on his shoulders, and made off with him to the castle of jewels, Tacni. Thereupon, the bearers of fair tidings hastened to report his coming, and when the news reached Shamsa and her father and mother, they all rejoiced with exceeding joy. And King Shalan took horse and rode out, commanding all his guards and ifrits and marids honourably to meet the prince. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased, saying, her permitted say. I'm just going to get a glass of water. Now, when it was the 426th night, Shahrazad said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that King Shalan commanded all his guards and ifrits and marids to meet the prince. And as soon as he came up with them, he... He dismounted and embraced him, and Jan Shah kissed his hand. Then Shalan bade put on him a robe of honour of many coloured silk, laced with gold and set with jewels, and a coronet such as man never saw, and mounting him on a splendid mare of the steeds of the kings of the jinn, took horse himself, and within an immense retinue riding on the right hand, and the left brought him in great state to the castle. Jahan Shah marvelled at the splendour of his edifice and with its walls builded of rubies and other jewels and its pavements of crystal and jasper and emerald and fell a-weeping at the memory of his past miseries. But the king and queen, Shamsar's mother, wiped away his tears and said, Now, no more weeping, and be of good cheer, for thou hast won to thy will. Then Shalan carried him into the inner court of the castle, where he was received by a multitude of beautiful damsels and pages and gin slaves, who seated him in the place of honour and stood to do him service while he was lost in amazement at the goodliness of the place and its walls all edified of precious metals and jewels of price. Presently, King Shalan repaired to his hall of audience, where he sat down on his throne and bidding the slave girls and the pages introduce the prince, rose to receive him and seated by his side and seated him by his side on the throne. Then he ordered the tables to be spread and they ate and drank and washed their hands, after which in came the Queen Shamsar's mother, and saluting Jan Shah, bade him welcome in these words. Thou hast come to thy desire after weariness, and thine eyes shall now sleep after watching, so praised be Allah for thy safety. Thus saying, she went away, and forthwith 
returned with the Princess Sham Sa, who saluted Jan Shah and kissed his hands, hanging her head in shame and confusion before him and her parents. After which, as many of her sisters as were in the palace, came up to him and greeted him in like manner. Then quoth the queen to him, Welcome, O my son, our daughter Shamsa hath indeed sinned against thee, but do thou pardon her misdeed for our sakes. When Janshah heard this, he cried out and fell down, fainting. Whereat the king marvelled, and they sprinkled on his face rose water, mingled with musk and kivet, till he came to himself, and looking at Princess Shamsa said, Praise be Allah who hath brought me my desire and have quenched the fire of my heart, replied she. May he preserve thee from the fire. But now tell me, O Janshah, what has befallen thee since our parting? And, and how thou, thou madest thy way to this place? seeing that few even of the Jan ever heard of Takmi the Castle of Jewels, and we were independent of all the kings, nor any what of the road hither. Thereupon he related to her every adventure and peril and hardship he had suffered, and how he had left his father at war with King Kafid, ending with these words, And all for thy sake, my lady Shamsa, Quoth the queen, Now hast thou thy heart's desire, for the princess is thy handmaid, and we give her in free gift to thee. Jan Shah joyed exceedingly at these words, and the queen added, Next month it will be the will of Almighty Allah. We will have a brave wedding and celebrate the marriage festival. And after the knot is tied, we will send you both back to thy native land with an escort of a thousand marrieds of our bodyguard, the least of whom, and thou bid him slay King Kafid and his folk, would surely destroy them to the last man in the twinkling of an eye. Furthermore, if it please thee, we will send thee year after year a company of which each and every can do so with all thy foes. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Thank you very much for listening this evening. I hope you enjoyed the reading. I will be back with you next week. Saman will be reading to you tomorrow with great pleasure. Um, I wish you all a very good night, a very lovely day tomorrow, a beautiful weekend. And I hope and look forward to seeing you all back on Tuesday again for more stories of 1001 Arabian Nights. And it is amazing. We are already halfway through the book at, what did I just read? The 426th night, right, of our 1001 night. So let's see. Let's see what happens next. Exciting times. Thank you, everybody. Good night and take care. Many salams to you. Bye-bye.